right, hello, and welcome to the second module. We are gonna talk about muscle testing. Muscle testing has a lot of research behind it. So instead of boring you with a bunch of cited resources, you can find a whole list of citations and resources and books and peer reviewed journals and all sorts of goodies to get um, your hands on in my guide section. There's a um, scientific research document that you can pull up and you can just dive into that and read about it for yourself. So I'm going to show you some ways to muscle test. We're going to talk about like the basics behind it. What exactly is it that you're doing? And uh, first, I'm going to share with you the story of how I came across muscle testing the first time and I was blown away. So when I first got out of the military a few years ago, I was really sick and I could not figure out what was going on. I literally had symptoms like I was having morning sickness. And if I took a multivitamin, I would immediately throw up. It was just really weird. So I went to Western medicine doctors, of course, just got sent for blood tests. I had a fantastic colonoscopy. Nobody could really give me an answer. Everyone was like, maybe it's Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, right? Just depending on who I talked to, it was one of like 5,000 things. I got tested for food allergies. Um, I tried everything. I don't even remember who, but at some point someone tells me that I should go see these witch doctors. And I'm like, yo, I'm up for anything because at this point it's been months and it is wearing me out. So I go see these ladies and they tell me, hey, you have a pathogen. I'm like, okay, whatever, right? Just hook me up with something. So they said, this pathogen is like from a serious third world country. And I'm like, yep, been there, done that. I was in the military. I'm not surprised at all. I remember eating lettuce, in fact, in Egypt and getting incredibly ill. So they um, had me stand with my arm out like this. And then I held a supplement in this hand and the lady was asking yes or no questions and pushing down on my arm. And I was like trying so hard to control what I was doing and I couldn't. And so anytime I answered yes, my arm wouldn't move. And if I answered no, my arm would move slightly. And it was the craziest thing I had ever seen in my life. In fact, I thought it was so crazy. I made my husband go in and for something else and had him do something so they could muscle test on him because I was like, did you see how cool that was? And that was the first time that I'd ever run across this. So kinesthetics, muscle testing. And then after that, I never really saw it again, but I thought it was so cool and I wanted to learn how to do it. But the ladies were like, yeah, we're, we don't really mentor people, whatever. So I was like, okay. And then I kind of forgot about it until after I went through all the stuff that I went through with my husband passing away, the same one that I introduced to how cool is this? He passed away. Then I ended up losing my daughter. Then I ended up losing my mind. And then uh, I came into energy healing and muscle testing is huge in this field because this is how we get answers from our body. So how exactly does that work? Well, know that your cells hold memory of everything. Okay. And energy is, is measurable and your subconscious knows everything. So the cool thing about it is we can, we're basically just testing and we're looking for spots that are a weaker energy field, a weaker energy frequency, however you want to think about that. So when we hit a spot, when we're asking a question where basically stress or emotions or some kind of abnormal input is going on. So like if I'm testing and I'm like, Hey, is your spleen happy? If there's a lower vibrational frequency going on there, if cells are um, at not functioning at a high level, I'm going to get a yes. And that is the basics of it, right? It goes lots of other scientific stuff. Go dive into the document. I'm not going to bore you with that. I just want you to know that simplistically put, all you are doing is identifying where are weaknesses in the body, okay? So I'm gonna show you my favorite way to muscle test, but know that there is million, not millions, probably that's all, that's an exaggeration. There's lots of different ways that you can muscle test. You can use a pendulum. I'm not gonna try to show you all of these because that is not what my forte of testing is, but just know you can go research all of this. So pendulum, you basically have a pendulum. It's on um, a chain or a rope or whatever. 
and you are swinging it at a 45 degree angle. And then when you think about the question that you're asking, it will turn to the left or turn to the right slightly. One way is a yes and one way is a no. I personally have a hard time with that one because it takes an immense amount of time every time you ask a question to watch the pendulum swing, but it's a good way to practice if you're getting consistent results. Um, while when you're learning how to do this. Okay. Another one that you'll see is this finger test. So basically you are using your underlying finger to uh, create resistance. And then you're asking yes or no questions. And a yes looks like this and a no looks more like this. It's a little difficult for me. It just feels funky for me to have my finger like that. So I don't really uh, like that one either. The traditional one is the holding out of the hand and asking the question, uh, yes or no. You can also put your arm at a 90 degree angle so that it's not so hard to stand there. But even if I have someone physically in my office doing a session, I do not physically muscle test their body. And the reason for that is I just find it awkward. I personally don't like to touch other people, number one. But number two, I think it's weird to make my client like stand or sit in this weird, awkward position. People are already kind of, you know, out of place when they're doing a session. So I want them to be able to sit in my recliner. Hey, just, you know, lean back, relax, whatever you want to do. So I don't want to make them standing there all awkward. So even if I do a session with someone in person, I always muscle test myself. I also know my yes or no answers really easily. And when you're working physically on someone else, you're not 100% sure what their yes or no really looks like. And K, I want to emphasize you're not looking for this dramatic, like, boom, okay? It's the effects of the muscle test are very subtle. That's why it takes practice, okay? So I'm gonna show you the method that I like, and then I'm gonna caveat with something that's the most important part about muscle testing after I show you how to do it, okay? All right, so I use what's referred to as basically kind of the ring method. Now, it does not matter how you do it. It's all about maintaining some consistency, okay? So this is how we're gonna do it. So you're gonna use one of your hands. It doesn't matter. One of them is gonna be your, your ringlet stays closed, okay? So for me, I'm use, I use my left hand. You're gonna make this little, you know, like you're making shadow puppets. Um, I use this and I'm basically going to put some pressure, not a lot, don't overdo it. This is like when I ride horses and I tell people, hold your reins like you have a bird in your hand, okay? So holding like you have a, a ladybug, let's do a ladybug today. So like you have a little tiny ladybug here, okay? Um, you're gonna put a tiny bit more pressure on this one than your other. So then you're just gonna close them together. So you're making a ring, right? Okay, so you're doing this, Okay, they're closed. This is for most people like to do this. This is going to be your no or your yes. And this is going to be your no. Now, what if it works opposite for you? It doesn't matter as long as you always are consistent. This can be your no. This can be your yes. Okay, just keep it consistent. So for me, this is my yes. This is my no. Now, when you start doing this, you're going to have the tendency to overdo it. The easiest way for me to explain this to someone is if you've ever drove a stick shift in a car. And if you haven't, then I know this doesn't make any sense to you. But if you overthink it, you will kill the car over and over again. You have to just let it flow. So how do you get to a point where you can do that? Practice, lots of practice, okay? So I literally would walk around when I first started doing this. My name is Amy, my name is Amy, my name is Amy, my name is Bill, okay? My name is Amy. My name is Bill. And you just do that. Ask yourself questions. My birthday is in November. Um, I am, uh, I love black. Like ask yourself yes or no questions. You can even make yourself a list, but don't stress out about it. It takes time. Okay. It takes time. And you're going to be like, I don't trust what I'm doing. That's super normal. And so know that know that, and I'm going to go into intuition in module three, right after this one. So you can understand that there are ways to overcome this frustration. And if you need to reach out to someone like myself and do a session so that you can release frustration around muscle testing, you can release any blocks that you have to receiving intuition, then, you know, do so. Otherwise, 
I'll tell you that when I was first starting to muscle test, I was so frustrated that I was getting stress headaches. And so one day I just sat down with myself and I was like, yeah, I want to release everything surrounding frustration with muscle testing. And I did it. I didn't even go into like full on depths of finding like misalignments or anything because I felt like I couldn't, right? I needed muscle test. That's the hard part. I needed muscle testing to do the process of releasing things, but I wasn't good enough at muscle testing to get to the point where I felt like I could release stuff. So I just sat down with myself and was like, okay, I am releasing any frustration associated with muscle testing, breathing in, breathing out, releasing it out, sending it out through my toes, through the root chakra. And you're going to learn how to do more of that in following modules. Well, and I teach you how to actually do this process of elf. Okay. All right. So for the meantime, muscle testing, yes, no. Now I want you to really, really understand this part. Okay. This is where you really want to wrap your head around this muscle testing. When you do it physically is simply verifying what you're already getting as intuition. Okay. So if you've done a session with me before or you follow me, you will know that I do not muscle test very often. Muscle testing for me is confirmation. Okay. So understand that it comes to you as an intuition first. And the muscle testing is verifying the input that you're receiving. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think the answer is the muscle test. It's not. So if I ask myself right now, my name is Amy immediately, immediately. The moment that I do that question, my subconscious is answering with a yes or a no. Okay. If my intention is fully open and I'm receiving impressions, I will see that before. And my muscle test is just telling me that. Yes. So sometimes when I'm working with someone, I'll be like, spleen, is it the spleen? Yes. Okay. Spleen. I'm just verifying what I saw and you'll see me when I do sessions or I'm working on a client, my hands move like this a lot, guys, this is my energy. This is me bringing in energy. This is me creating my energy flow. And that's why I'm receiving impression is keeping that energy going. So that's why I move my hands so much. It's me receiving impressions, bringing that in. We'll go into that more in the next module, exactly how to do that. I just really want you to know that you're receiving first muscle testing second. Okay. So practice, practice, practice. I'll have more trainings, more guides, and more ways to do that. I just wanted this to be the simplistics of muscle testing. What is it? How does it work? You're just looking for that weakness. Okay.